consecutive games in regulation. What's the biggest takeaway from the games in Vancouver? Well, I just didn't see a lot of adjustments from the Leafs, and that's been a rarity for them this season. They've done a pretty good job of reacting to what their opponent does. But, I mean, credit to Vancouver. They played high in the offensive zone. They clogged up the neutral zone. They didn't give the Leafs a lot in the middle of the ice, and, and Toronto just didn't seem to have a response to that. And then you look at their penalty kill. It was 0 for 3 over those two games, and that's a tough way to lose the special teams battle. And it's something that can't carry over here for Sheldon Keefe and company. Well, my takeaway is the Leafs are human. It's been an amazing start to the season. I think they invested a lot of energy in sweeping the Oilers, including twice without Austin Matthews and Frederick Anderson. They get to Vancouver, play on the second half of a back-to-back -back against a rested opponent, take Friday off, no morning skate Saturday. I think that they just looked a little bit tired, a little bit out of sync, and that's what caught up to them in Vancouver. Well, speaking of struggles, that top line has not produced at even strength in the last three games. Is that something to be concerned about? Okay, here is what I make of the top line, because it is jarring when they go three games without an even strength uh, goal produced. I think Matthews, 15 shots to lead the team in the three games, maybe a little rust, still finding his way a little bit back, but I think he'll be fine. Joe Thornton, maybe they got to look at load management in these back-to-back -back situations because I thought he was a little bit, a little bit slower than usual in those games, but I think ultimately that line will be fine. Yeah, I think ultimately they will be fine, but I look at how Mitch Marner played since Austin Matthews came back, and you look back at Marner in those first two games against Edmonton, so dominant. He was their best player on the ice most of the time, and then Matthews comes back, and suddenly it's like Marner has made himself 1B on that line, and so he's trying to feed Matthews, trying to get him the puck, and the rhythm seems off. The chemistry seems off. Marner should just be playing his game, trying to put the puck in the net. Don't be worried about getting Matthew touches. He's going to get his opportunities. But Marner needs to be dialed into his own game, too, because that's when that line is at their best. Everyone is flowing together. The big boys were quiet. The big stars were actually the third liners. Uh, Pierre Engvall, Zach Hyman, Ilya Mikheyev taking over at times. There's a lot of nicknames floating around for that new third line. What's your favorite? I love the meh line because you look at them on paper and you think, meh, Pierre Engvall, Ilya Mikheyev, what are they going to do? And then boom, they come at you and they surprise you with how good they are. So it's, I like the nickname because it's just like that line. It sneaks up and surprises you. You think it's nothing. And then it ends up being the best line on the ice for Toronto. Zip line is a good one too with how fast they are, but I like the hem line. Engvall, six foot five, Mikheyev, six foot three, their wingspans. It must be so intimidating to try and get out of your own end against those guys, especially with Hyman, Hyman being such a ferocious four checker. So I'll go with the hem line. The question now is will we see them at home? They've only played together on the road. Leafs versus the Jets on TSN4 Tuesday.